Hey guys, and welcome to the video in another segment of Hacking Modding Monday news and info. Again, I'm going to have to break this one up into parts because there's just so much going on and I don't want the videos to stretch on forever. So in this one, we are going to be focused primarily on Sony systems and on the 3DS as well as maybe one or two miscellaneous things, including our top 10 pirated movies of the week. And then tomorrow we will focus pretty much only on the Nintendo Switch and everything that has been updated and has come out there. For those of you who are new to this, you can look down in the description for a brief summary on what these weekly segments are all about. So let's just jump right into it and get started. And let's start off this week over at the PS3 scene. We come to PS3 Brewology, where we see a few updates to a few homebrews, starting with the Apollo save tool, which is now on version 1.0.9. Whenever you come here to these things, in case you are new with PS3 Brewology, you can just click on them, click on the release notes, and then sometimes it will tell you what's been done in the latest version. As it does here, you can see what they've improved and added in this latest version here, and then come over to files and grab the download. Then we have updates to Showtime and Movian. Both are on 5.0.703. In the release notes here, there's nothing that really shows except where to put the file itself. But in Movian, when you go over, you can see that there have been a few things that have been listed with this latest revision. And then we have Irisman, which adds, interestingly enough, uh, zip support so you can turn a folder into a zip file or compress it into a zip file but you can also extract zip files as well through the irisman file manager now in its last update which i think came last week it also integrated XFAT support. So I'm hoping that some of the other file managers will follow suit like Multiman, maybe Managuns, because these are a couple of pretty big and important features to have. And now we head on over to the PS4 scene where we see an update to KH3 Save Editor. Now this is a program you normally would use on your PC and what it does is you can edit your saves from various Kingdom Heart games that are on various PlayStation platforms like PS2, PS3, and PS4. You can see the various games here that are supported and their platforms. But this update adds Final Fantasy VII Remake support. But this comes with one or two little caveats. The first one being that you need to have a decrypted save of the game. And there's only two ways to do this. The first is using a PS4 save mounter. But to use this, you need to have a PS4 that's on hen. And in order to be able to get a decrypted save, out of your hen ps4 since final fantasy 7 works on newer firmware obviously you need to have a newer more updated version of hen which i guess only exists in private so i guess that's for those people it says here or custom firmware uh, i don't think there's ps4 custom firmware unless i miss something or maybe they know something we don't so the second method is pretty much for everybody else. It works whether you have a modded PS4 or not, and that's by using Save Wizard. The thing with Save Wizard is when you click that link, by the way, it brings you here, is that this is pretty much a game genie for the PS4, and you need to pay for it. It starts at 50 bucks, and then the top of the line version is 60 bucks. And when you get that, then you can decrypt and re-encrypt the save course in between then you can use this to apply various things to your save like you can add modify or remove materia add modify or remove inventory items you can add change or remove materia that's installed into weapons play as red 13 and a couple of other things so if you're a big final fantasy 7 remake fan and you want to mess around with your game save unless you have a more current up-to-date ps4 with hen on it then your only other solution at least for now is to crack open that wallet and buy that save wizard 
And now as we jump to the PS Vita scene, we come over to Vita DB, which is a place we visited quite a few times. There's a few updates here, such as uh, to Naboru, which is now on version 0.51. This is a manga comic Rita for the PS Vita. Then we have Vita Quake 2, which is a Quake 2 port. And lastly, we have Easy RPG Player. This has been updated, and for those that don't know, this allows you to play the homebrew games that have been created with RPG Maker 2000 and 2003. And now we head on over to the 3DS 2DS scene where Luma 3DS gets updated. It's been a while since we've seen the last update and here just a few hours ago they released this one they fix multiple issues here most of them seem to be uh, revolving around uh, shutdown times reboot times and things like that they also fixed a few other issues if you have a modded 2ds 3ds system then chances are you are running luma 3ds on it already just grab the zip file and place its contents onto your sd card you can also update this through the luma 3ds update or homebrew app if you happen to have it installed in your system Hey, and continuing with the 3DS, here's something that's pretty interesting. There's a new exploit that's been found via the safe mode. This is called unsafe mode, but it actually, of course, is. So the exploit uses the safe mode in order for you to be able to hack your 3DS. So there's an intro here. The directions are listed here as well. There's also some stuff regarding the exploit itself. When you grab the zip file, there's instructions there on what you need to do in order to be able uh, to use this exploit on your 3DS or 2DS systems. On old 3DSs, you need to be on firmware 6.0 or higher. On new 3DSs, you need to be on 8.1 or higher. It also says that in order for you to be able to do this, you will need some sort of user land exploit to install a hacked Wi-Fi save. So yeah, make sure if you decide to use this that you read up on the instructions. However, since this is something that's brand new, I would probably wait until we start seeing tutorials pop up just to ensure that you don't, you know, mess anything up. And next for the 3DS, we have an update to Line for 3DS. Line is a port of the Line software or app that's been converted over for the 3DS. For those that don't know what it is, this is a homebrew that allows you to send messages and texts and images and video little sound bites, you can send stickers. Think of it as something like uh, along the lines of WhatsApp, but for your 3DS, you can also do group chat and whatnot. So if you've never used this before, I'm going to put a link here to uh, this page, which has a ton of information, including detailed tutorials and facts and all of this stuff. Now, the latest version that just came out is 1.4, and there is a guide already here that's detailed with pictures and everything that covers this latest 1.4 release. Just make sure that you read everything here because when you come over to the releases here, you will notice that there's quite a few files that you can download. So make sure you, again, read over the instructions so you know what it is exactly that you need. And we will end the week with the top 10 most pirated movies for the week ending April 27th, 2020, according to TorrentFreak.com. So at number 10, we have Ip Man 4. At number 9, we have Sonic the Hedgehog. Trolls World Tour falls the most on the list. It was number 3 last week. It's now number 8. The Gentleman is at 7. Gretel and Hansel is at 6. Arkansas debuts at number five on the list. Bad Boys for Life falls from number two to number four. Bloodshot is at number three, and it was number 10 last week, so uh, it's moved up quite a bit. Fantasy Island, which was number one last week, is now two. And Extraction is a movie that has also 
debuted on the list this week and it debuted right at number one. How about that? That's a Netflix movie rated at 6.9. And looking at the top three movies here with the highest IMDb rating, the first is The Gentleman at 8.0, Ip Man 4 at 7.2, and Bad Boys for Life at 7.1. And one honorable mention here that literally just came out, it's on Apple TV, but it's already floating around the interweb, so if you want to look for it, you shouldn't have a hard time finding it at all because I didn't. Anyway, it's the Beastie Boy Story documentary, and I love music documentaries, actually documentaries in general, but especially music ones, and ones like these that have to deal with the golden era of hip-hop definitely pull the strings in my heart because I was born and raised in the Bronx, and I was a wee little lad in the 1970s, and at that time disco was king, and in New York it was all about Studio 54, but in the late 70s, early 80s, we saw the emergence of the DJs and their unique mixing styles, and that paved the way for the MCs and the MCs battling each other and all the freestyles and then it just spread to the other boroughs like Queens and Brooklyn and before you know it, hip hop was born and well, you know the rest. And the Beastie Boys had a lot to do with that golden age of hip hop during the 80s and 90s. So yeah, I'm definitely there tonight. This is what I'm gonna be watching. And that is going to do it for today, guys. Don't forget to tune in to part two tomorrow. You know I appreciate you guys watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, you know, as always, the best way to do that is just to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, guys. Be safe, but have fun. And we will see you on the next one.